period of work, right? So keep that in mind. We are going to have a um, homework check as well tomorrow, so you can use, you know, think about how you can use your time in class tomorrow, okay? Um, and what we're starting today is starting to dip our finger in the unit, unit circle pond, okay? It's a very vast, deep pond, and we need to know this pond like the back of our hand. And I'm telling you right now, I, every year that I teach um, trig, which includes the unit circle, it's the base for everything that we're going to learn. Every year that I teach it, I have students that buy into it like any other, and they do what I ask, and then they don't stress about it. And then I have kids that just don't learn it. And I'm telling you right now, you cannot be in that latter category. If you don't learn the unit circle the way you need to know it, you cannot continue into the other sections, okay? So <clears throat> I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that because it's that important. And I promise you, I promise you, I'm really good at the unit circle. I feel like I will compliment, compliment myself. I teach it very well. And I am going to show you lots of ways to learn it. And we're to, it all starts with today, okay? Today is when we're going to start learning it. And we're going to continue mostly Monday, Tuesday, all right? Um, so let me get started here by reading. So I have to talk a lot today, but the assignment's not very long or difficult. So you'll probably finish in class, but remember we have a work day tomorrow. So really try, and I know it's seventh period and you're bored with this, you don't want to learn it, you're annoyed. Um, but please, please, please try to pay attention and ask good questions if you don't understand, because I'm going to give you good information. All right, here we go. Um, what do engineers, artists, art, airline pilots, <coughs> carpenters, and golfers have in common? They all work with angles, like we all do from time to time. There are times we can estimate an angle like a golfer on his tee shot, but a carpenter or engineer must measure angles precisely in order to be successful. Our chapter begins the journey into trig with an introduction into angles and their measures in this lesson. We will examine properties of angles and their measures. So um, one more thing just to be annoying. Um, if you are planning on going on to calculus next year, whether you do it at this school or when you graduate from high school, you go to college and you want to be in the medical profession or an engineer or anything like that, you're going to need calculus and you have to know the unit circle. And I cannot tell you how many people come back to me and say, God, I wish I had listened to you. I wish I had learned it. Um, or thank you, because now I know what I need to know for the upper classes, okay? So let's get started with some vocab. Vocab? Vocab? Standard position is an angle whose vertex is at the origin, which is zero, zero, right? And uh, of a coordinate system, and one ray is on the positive axis. So a lot of geometry going on. Um, an angle has a vertex at zero, zero, the origin, is made up of two rays. And one of the rays is the initial side. It's the side along the x-axis. So this is your initial side. And it's fixed. It never moves. So from now on, the first side, the first side of your angle is always going to start and stay on the positive part of the x-axis. Okay? The terminal side is the ray or side of the angle that is not along the x-axis. It's where it ends. So this would be your terminal side. And you'll notice this arrow here. It's showing where we start and where we and where it ends. And that's like it's called wrapping, W-R-A-P, not R-A-P. Wrapping up, which means our angle will be positive, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And this angle, we use a symbol often called theta. I think I mentioned it yesterday. It's a Greek letter. It means angle measure. What? Um, and it's just a variable. It's like x equals 5. We're not afraid of x equals 5, right? That's just theta equals 50 degrees or whatever, okay? It's just a variable. And you'll see it in print a lot with a straight line like that, or you might see even a line not connecting but I always do it with like the curvy in there. That's how I learned it, okay? We're gonna go deeper into coterminal angles in a second, but there are two angles in standard position that have the same terminal side. And then we get to the unit circle, my beloved unit circle. It's a circle whose radius is one unit <clears throat> and it centers at the origin of the coordinate plane. Points on the circle are related to periodic functions. Let me draw you 
a unit circle. Just watch, you don't need to do this, because I want to show you exactly what the unit circle is. Okay? It is this. Here's the x-axis, there's the y-axis, and the word unit comes from one. We are only going out one unit all around. So, but since that's so small, we bump it up to look like this, and we kind of extend it out. But really, it's just a circle right here. How can we be afraid of that? We can't, okay? That's what you're seeing here. This is the x-axis. This is your y-axis on a regular old graph. That's all it is. When I what, say it one more time. One, literally, here, I'm gonna show you. Great question. What do I mean by unit and one? I mean, if this is zero, zero, this point is one, zero. Think about it on a graph. What's this point right here? It's one, zero, right? So what's this point over here? negative one, zero, right? Think about it, if I'm here, I'm at the origin, I go left one, not up and down at all, that's negative one, zero. How about this one up here, what would this one be? Zero, one, unit, circle, zero, one. And down would be zero, negative one. I'm gonna tell you, when it comes time for us to really show that we know, like fill in a unit circle, timed and things like that. Those four are the ones that people get wrong the most. It always shocks me. You're gonna memorize, I hate that word, you're gonna memorize all the other, there's three other ordered pairs and all kinds of stuff in there that you're gonna, you're gonna know it. But when it comes to these four corners, I call them corners, um, we forget that it's just a point, it's just out one in all four directions. That's all it is. So picture this when you're seeing the unit circle and what these four points are, are simply basic points on the graph, the coordinate plane, okay? And as we go into unit circle, I'm, I'm annoyingly, I hate the word memorize. We are not memorizing anything. We're gonna know it. So you guys have learned how to study for certain things and it works for certain things. You, I see you guys with your little three by five cards and you flip it over. That's great, that's memorization. It's, it's usually short term recall, like you're studying, you have to memorize dumbly all the presidents of the order or all the capitals of um, all the states. I don't understand why that's important. But anyway, you memorize. But do you remember it 10 years later? Probably not. So with the unit circle, I don't use the M word. You are gonna learn it, you're gonna know it, you're gonna internalize it, you're gonna love it, and then you're not gonna stress about it. Okay, moving on. First type of two type of special angles we're gonna talk about is coterminal. I grab the water and drink, take a sip. Sorry, I've been talking a lot today. So let me tell you what this is. Two angles in standard position that have the same terminal side are called coterminal. We can find an angle that is coterminal to a given angle by adding or subtracting one revolution. A revolution around the circle is how many degrees? Yep, back to geometry. A full revolution is 360 degrees, right? So any given angle has, I'm not even gonna say many, I'm gonna say an infinite number of coterminal angles, and I'll show you what I mean. For example, beta, equals 36 degrees. That's a Greek letter B. Don't worry, you don't have to make these letters perfectly. It's just a variable. Some angle equals 36 degrees. Is the, is coterminal to all of the following? And that's just a short list. Let me take 360, um, 36. If I take 36 on my calculator and I add a full revolution, I get 396. I'm gonna draw you a picture in a second. If I add another 360, I get 756. I could do this until I die, until my batteries die, and all of these angles I'm adding in here, I messed up right there, but adding 360 over and over and over, it just keeps going, they're all coterminal. I can also subtract, I can go in the other direction. I can take 36 and subtract 360, that's how they got negative 324. I can do it again, I can get negative 684, and that goes on forever. So you can find an infinite number of coterminal angles for every angle. So let me show you what I mean. So if they give us, there's a theta of 220 degrees, we're gonna draw that on there. 
So as we said a second ago, a full circle is 360, right? So what would half a circle be? What would from here to here be? Semicircle, how many degrees? You're right. 180, right? So this is zero, 180. We sh zero and 360 are coterminal, by the way, right? When we start here at zero, but when we go a full revolution, we get 360. What would be half of 180? 90. And that should make sense. Look, it's a right angle. That is 90 degrees. So that means each of these quadrants, quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4, are 90 degrees. So 0 plus 90 is 90. 90 plus 90 is 180. 180 plus 90 is 270, right? Back to 360. Basics. It's basic math. It's math you can do in your head if you didn't have a calculator. Okay, so where's 220? It's somewhere between 180 and 270. So it's going to be in this quadrant. This is how we draw it. Somewhere up there, don't worry about exactly. We just know it's between those two. And we draw that arrow showing where we started and where we ended. So here was my initial side, always there. And then it wrapped around to our theta, which is 220. So that's 220. We're going to use this little symbol, theta prime, to show the angle that's coterminal. So it didn't say which way. It didn't say negative one or a positive one. Let's just make it nice and easy. Theta prime is going to be 220 plus what? What are we always going to add? 360. I'm never going to change it. Okay. And when I do that, 220 plus 360, I get 580. So 580 is our coterminal angle that we're going to use. So it's just one of many. How do I show it? So guys, I really like it if you watched me draw it real quick. So we always start here. We always start here. I'm going to do it in green. I'm going to do my 580 in green. So I start here, and I'm going to go a full revolution. That's how many degrees did I just go? 360. That's what I just did there. And then I keep going, and I end up right on top of this angle. So this spot, this exact spot shares the spot, 220 shares it with 580. They start and end at the same place, co, share, terminal, terminal side, share the same spot, but one of them went around the block one extra time, you think of it, okay? That's coterminal. So from here on out, what I want you to, and I'll use the word memorize, coterminal is plus or minus 360 degrees. That's what you remember, coterminal plus or minus 360. You add, you subtract, that's it, okay? Next page. Trying to get tricky on us. Find the measure of the angle below counterclockwise rotation, right? If we wrap from our initial side counterclockwise, that is going to give us a positive theta, okay? What is this angle right here? That's what they're asking. What is wrapped right here? So if the whole thing from here to here, a line, right, is 180. How do we find what this is? Subtract. It's 180 minus 45, which is 135. Thank you. So that's the measure of that angle. It's positive because we're wrapping that way. Okay? Counterclockwise, see the arrow, is a negative theta, negative angle. So same idea, what is this angle right here, okay? So if we try, and just even though we're going backwards, it's, it's not, this is not going to be 270 down here. Did we already talk about that? Did we that? Yeah. So it's distance. Think about it. From here to here is how many degrees? From here to here? 90, right? From here to here is 90, and then add the extra 30. So our theta would be 90 plus 30, because the arrow goes all the way to that. So that would be negative 120, because of the direction we wrapped, okay? So negative 90, 30, total of 120 degrees in the negative direction, okay? So that's why that arrow is so important, okay? So we talked about coterminal angle. Oh, let's just fill this in. So we know one full revolution or rotation is 360. Half is 180, 
right? Cut 180 in half, that was 90. And then three quarters was 270. Those are really important degrees to kind of know. We had just labeled that circle on the last page with that, so I just thought we'd fill it in again. Okay, so we talked about coterminal angles on the last page. The second and last type of angle we have to talk about is reference angles. Reference angles. Really, really important when we start really getting into learning the unit circle. I'm going to throw this method at you. Do you like this? Somebody said they see this in the patterns. There's all patterns. And I learned so much from my students. Someone will say, you know how I learned it is, I you know Ms. Shackton was singing some song, I don't know. Um, and I share that. And I throw all of this at you until something sticks. It's just like factoring. When we do factoring, I'll say, here's my method, the chart method. But if you have one that works for you, go right ahead. Because everybody learns differently. So um, I'm going to be patient with you as long as you are trying. And we are going to learn every single one of you. Okay, reference angles is one of those methods. And um, we're not going to learn how it's used in the unit circle. We're just going to learn how to find reference angles. That's what we're going to do right now. Given an angle in standard position, its reference angle is the acute, so cute, little, it's less than 90 degrees, formed by the terminal side of the given angle and the x-axis. That is everything. Super simple concept, I, tr I promise you. But you have to know that the reference angle is always less than 90 and how it's formed. So looking over here, the angle at the left is 210. This is a 210 degree angle. That's given to us in this little problem here. What is the reference angle? So the reference angle is formed by the terminal side and which axis? X, not Y. There's only one angle that could be that in any one of these. So again, if I know from here to here is 180, I would then do 210 minus 180, and I hope I get an answer less than 90, which I do. What is it? 30, right, 30 degrees. So that is a 30 degree angle. My answer is made, let's do another one. I form my angle with the x-axis, not the y-axis, and the terminal side, wherever my angle ended, okay? So let's do another one. I guess I skipped that in the last class. I didn't put that in there. Okay, so 150 would be somewhere between 90 and 180, right? So let's put it in here. Now you're going to start seeing me not draw, look, not draw the initial side. You can. There is nothing wrong with, now I'll put it there, putting it there. But it's kind of like when you learned about variables and you get a 1 in front of your X and your teacher said, it's fine to write the 1, but you don't need to. Why? Because it's always a 1. You write X, we all know there's a 1 in front. So you didn't have to write it anymore. Same thing with this. In trig, we always have one side of the angle there, so you don't really have to draw it. We're going to go ahead and draw the arrow, though. So that is 150 degrees. The reference angle is the acute angle formed by the x-axis and the terminal side. So again, I'm going to do what to find that angle? Who knows? Yep, what numbers? Good, Cami. 180 minus 150. Do I get 30 again? Yeah. It's not always 30. That's just a coincidence. Okay. 315 is going to be between 270 and 360, right? So it's going to be in this quadrant, wrapping from the initial side to that. Okay. That's 315. Positive, so I get that right. So my reference angle is formed by the x-axis and the terminal side. 360, right, the whole thing minus what we have is 45. Are we getting this? Hope so. Negative, don't be afraid of the negative, same thing, opposite direction. So again, we start here, right, always, and we're going to wrap this way. So to go 120, I would go 90, right, to here to here is 90, and this would be 180. So we're going to be somewhere in this quadrant, right, because that's 180. My reference angle is formed by the x-axis and the terminal side. So that's what? 
180. It's got to be less than 90, so what should we do? Minus 120. Because, and we're going to get um, 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 60. No, acute angles, let's make sure we get this, are, are less than 90, but they're also greater than zero. So reference angles are always positive, okay? <clears throat> that will make a lot more sense when you learn why we're doing these, but for right now, we're just learning like the mechanics of it, okay? We're getting there, guys. Stay with me. Sorry, Izzy. Mm -hmm. um, well, there are two different problems. This one was, um, this is 30, and we were trying to find what we were trying to find. Oh, this was already wrapped to here. So this was 90, agreed plus the 30, so the total from here to here, 90 plus 30, is 120 in distance, but because of the direction, it's negative. Make sense? Oh, no, it's not a reference angle because it's made with the y-axis in here. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's go on to our next item, and then when we have the homework, I promise if there's something you're confused about, you know I'll help you. We have all tomorrow as well. It's so important that you get your answer, your questions answered, though. Okay, please don't just say, "Ah, oh, I don't get this." It's not it's not one of those days. Mm -hmm. I gave you your papers yesterday. Okay, so all right, um, I'm gonna bust a move through all of this because there's a lot of geometry talk in here that's unnecessary. Maybe just talking about central angle, reminding you an angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle. Okay, um, that's all of our unit circle angles. We're always at the center. We're always having the initial side on the positive x-axis. An intercepted arc is the portion of the circle whose endpoints are um, on the sides of the central angle of the circle and whose remaining points lie in the interior of the angle. This is an intercepted arc that I think we go deeper into later, but I'll just throw the vocab word at you. It's, there's nothing to do with it really today. What I really want to get to is this guy, the radian. Radian, one radian is the measure of a central angle of a circle that intercepts an arc equal to the length to a radius of the circle. What? You can use a proportion to convert an angle, blah, blah, blah. Okay, blah, 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 for real. What I want you guys to know is that you have been getting thetas in degrees. That's what we've been talking about so far. You can also do theta in radians. It's, it's like if I took Ashton's height and I measured his height in inches, and then I used a conversion formula and changed it to centimeters, okay? Um, a 5K is how many miles? 3.1 miles. There's a conversion, right? There's some formula you can multiply by, divide by, and get it. Same idea. Degrees and radians are the same angle, just another way of stating it, like I just gave you examples. Fahrenheit and Celsius, thank you. Perfect example, okay? So we have formulas to convert from degrees to radians or radians to degrees. Really, really, really simple. But I'll tell you, when I walked around and helped people, I think they tuned me out a little bit and they didn't kind of put it in their calculator right. So just pay attention, super simple. What we do is going from degrees to radians is we multiply by pi over 180 and radians to degrees, you flip it. And I'm gonna show you how it works right here. So what I have here in part A is a degrees, 60 degrees, okay? I wanna change it to radians. Degrees to radians, I multiply by pi over 180. Listen to what I'm gonna say right here. Back in geometry, if you remember that long ago, whenever it was, your teacher or your directions would say, leave your answer in terms of pi. All that means is ignore pi. He's just traveling along into the answer. You don't put pi in your calculator. And most of the time, you're going to see radians with a pi symbol in the numerator. It's very common. But you do have to simplify the fraction. Okay, so I can do this one by hand, and I would start practicing, because there are going to be some easier fractions like this one that you won't have a graphing calculator for. 
like you can cancel the zeros and then simplify 6 18ths to 1 3rd. But just like not putting a 1 in front of an x, we don't put a 1 in front of pi. That pi is still there, pi over 3. So in your calculator, all you would have put in is 60 divided by 180, and then math, enter, enter. So I got 1 3rd, 1 3rd pi, or pi over 3. Okay, here's one you definitely would use your calculator. Degrees given to radians, pi in the numerator, because you want a pi in your answer. So pi is going to just tag along. Ignore it. Pretend it's not there. So 85 divided by 180. Math, enter, enter. I get 17 pi over 36. Again, guys, I did not put pi in the calculator. You're going to get the wrong answer. I only put the numbers, 17 or 8, whatever the numbers are. Okay, one more. Here's radians not in terms of pi. So somebody came up with this many radians by multiplying the pi in. You always get crazy decimals. So this is probably rounded. Who cares? Radians to degrees, we put pi in the denominator. And this is when you do put it in your calculator. You've never seen like 50 degrees over pi, right? Degrees is just a number. So we're going to do 2.5 times 180 divided by, and whenever you're using a calculator, don't use 3.14, my darlings. Use the pi symbol, which is above the caret, okay? Why? Why do we use the, the calculator button instead of 3.14? It's, we round 3.14, right? This gives us the most exact answer, okay? It goes all the digits that are written out in the whole length, okay? So 143.239 degrees. So if you see a degree symbol, you know it's degrees. If you see a pi symbol, you know it's um, radians. If it's not in terms of pi, it'll say 2.5 radians. Okay. Last, very last thing, really quick, one minute, we're done. Stay with me. Is just talking about some basic radians. We're not going to go too deep into radians today. We will on Monday. But let's just talk about some basic ones. So remember we talked about 360 is the whole unit circle. So with radians, let's just sketch one right here. Right here, I got southern all of a sudden. This would be zero pi. And if you go a full revolution around, in degrees it's 360, but in radians it's two pi. Nice and even, two pi. So half of the unit circle is just one pi, right? Or pi. So what's a quarter of it? What would 90 degrees be? Half of this, right? Half of pi. Divide pi by 2. You write it literally like that. Pi over 2. And that's how you say it. Pi over 2. Half of pi. And we won't even go any further. This is 1 and a half pi, but we'll get to that another day. I just wanted to point out quadrant 1 and 2. So look here. Actually, let's do this one first. Pi over 2, as we just said, is up at the top, wrapping like that, right? Pi would be start here and here, half of the unit circle. So pi and 180 go together. So let's go back and do last problem, negative pi over 4. So that's a fourth of pi. So think about it. If this is half, right in the middle would be pi over 4, right? So where's negative pi over 4? Right. Oh, this is good. What's going on out there? It'd be going like that. And you want to show the arrow because it's negative. Okay, so that would be negative pi over 4. And that be it. Okay, I threw a lot at you. Please take the homework seriously. Don't just copy it. I will be out there with the people. I will mingle with you and help you with anything you need help with. Come tomorrow ready to ask questions, finish homeworks. What, sorry, still ready? Don't yell at me. I'm recording this, Ashton. Gosh, you make me look bad. Just kidding. You're fine, you're perfect. Thank you for waiting, I appreciate you waiting.
Um, tomorrow I can give you a quiz, just remind me. Okay. All right, homework is written on the board behind me. We're waiting for Ashton to finish now this one. So, one, two, five through eight, 11 through 19 odd, 2021. If you look at the, guys, write it down, write it down, write it down. There's two number eights for some reason. Just do the first one. If you scan down, what? Do the first one. How did you hear do both from me saying do the first one? Oh, Ashton, that's so cute. Okay. There is two, there is. I didn't make it up. There are two number eights. I don't know why. Oh my gosh. take a nap while Ashton finished writing the homework down. It's Tuesday again on the week. Come on. Okay. All right. Let me get some things going here. And I'm going to move it up in a minute, but if anybody wants to come up and look at 19 or 20 and 21, you can work that far ahead. Free. Give me one second and I will be out there. Remember, this is asking for reference angles. Reference angles are formed by what x axis and the term in the side. So your answer is what we're looking for is given 135, you drew that, then what is this angle? That's 180 minus.
Someone needs the first sheet. Just tell me and I'll bring it to you. You guys did awesome. I felt your concentration.
And you're welcome to stay here. I have to go help a student in the media department. Okay. We'll walk on there too. 